Astronomy, you could take in, you could take in, you could take in, help, you could take in, you could take in, you could take in. The cutest you could take in gastronomy museum, and it was free. Did I mention that? It was free, and it, it was so cute, right? So they they kind of took you through the tools that they use and the way they used to live and things like that, and it kind of got me thinking. I haven't really discussed the experience of going to a restaurant or, you know, just acquiring food here in Merida. It's a little bit different than what I am used to and at the same time kind of brought me back to my roots a little bit. about to take off to go to Orden del Chaos to meet up with Anne Holman from Priority Focus Life because we've been meeting at Order del Chaos weekly since we got here in February and you know some routines are like bad to let go of but I just wanted to go over these few things before we all discuss it open forum because I'm curious what the kids have to say too about the differences one of the things that I wasn't quite used to is the availability of street foods, right? So you can go to the Mercado at any time and find lots and lots of kiosks that sell street food. And you can find food as cheap as like 10 pesos for a torta. And they were really good tortas. They weren't like mediocre. It's not like because of the price you get like less quality. I feel like everybody puts a lot of quality into everything they do. You can also find soups, you can find of course tacos, sabutes, and yeah, so there's a lot of other things that I'm still learning the names of. But the point is that the, the, the quality of the food is pretty good in those kiosks. You can also find these throughout the street. One of our favorite places to get tortas was on a main street. And when they open, it has a little cart within its doors and they work off of the cart. But it's in an actual store. You know, they have three walls and then they just open the gate out to the street. So that is quite common. And also um, challenging because if you walk around when things are closed, you don't know what's there. Because when the doors are closed, everything kind of looks the same. Everything looks like it could be somebody's home or it could be just a random store. And I'm sure I've mentioned before that Google is not really efficient here. You can really find every single restaurant on Google. I would say not even 10% of the restaurants are listed on Google. There's so much. There is so much available. And unless you explore the streets regularly, there you won't know that these things exist. So I definitely recommend walking. Another thing that came in super handy is Rappi. So they have a lot of delivery services. So Rappi, I believe, is a Colombian company that delivers. They also have Uber Eats. Yeah, so the other day we were hanging out with some of the moms. I love that Merida has so many amazing single moms, or at least I got lucky that they were all there when we visited. And uh, one of the moms had ordered Rappi, so <laughs> I got this footage from there. <laughs> um, it was great, like, so she, we were all sitting, eating ice cream, chilling with the kids playing, and she was able to order Rappi because she had a lunch. So I thought that was pretty cool. This is the last thing I wanted to talk about because. <laughs> Um, this is so good. This is so good. Now, scientifically proven, I think, when you're making a dessert, like 99% of the time, that recipe will call for a little bit of salt. And the reason for this is because salt tends to open your palate to receive the sweetness and the different flavors and things like that. 
so things tend to taste better when you add salt because it opens up your receptors. And this is not only salty, but it's also acidic and a little bit spicy, right? And so it, it just enhances anything that you put it on. Now, they usually combine this with chamoy. I am not as much of a fan as of chamoy as I am of this because I feel like Jars have crazy, but like preference, right? This is my thinking on it. Chamoy has a strong taste, I find. This is just complimentary. This will make anything taste better. So I have been putting it on any fruit, like watermelon, for example. Um, but any fruit is good with this. And then I add it to my eggs. I add it to my avocado. If you guys have, you know, watched my stories on Instagram, you know that. My favorite breakfast is egg and avocado all smushed together. And when you add this, oh, it's so freaking delicious. So this is a staple in Mexican food that I totally recommend. And I totally recommend no matter where you are, because I know they have this in the US because it was a TikTok thing for a while. Okay, so let's go. Let's go meet up with them. So the thing I love most about eating here, the thing that's different is in the US I feel like you have to be quiet and here I feel like I can talk pretty much as loud as my passion like allows me to and nobody interrupts. Nobody boos, nobody taps me on my shoulder or recommends that I like Nobody does that. Okay, so. I mean, I, I was gonna say like descriptions are less descriptive here. Like they're more vague, especially when it comes to describing sweets. It's like red fruit. I'm like, thanks for that. There's a lot of red fruit though, so what are you saying here? I still don't know what the just, red fruit is. Just red fruit. I'm like, okay. Okay, frutas rojas in better in Spanish. It's better in Spanish, I guess. Yeah, no. It never helps. Being that I have so many dietary restrictions, I have a really hard time with the non-descriptiveness of the items in most restaurants because there's certain things that they take for granted that the things have in it like butter, cream, cheese. These things are not always listed. There's much more meat here. Less vegetables, so... Yeah, that's a, that's a big difference. And do you like that or do you hate that? I mean, I don't hate vegetables, but I'm a child, what do you expect? Yeah. I like this. Green tomatoes. Green tomatoes. And this is red tomatoes. It's not spicy. Rice is a lot more good. Like as a side, but here they don't. And if they do, they give you like a tiny little cup of rice. I feel like every time we go to a Cuban restaurant in Miami, there's just a lot of rice. Because like they'll give you rice, but they'll give you like rice. Almost anywhere in the US, the portion sizes are just naturally bigger. One thing I didn't notice until Anne pointed out is that they never take you out of the restaurant. So sobre mesa, it, it, you know, traditionally back home, like after a meal, you can sit down and chat and it's called sobre mesa and it's something that within our family, it's really like a big deal and something that we always do. So I'm guessing that that's why, but like as soon as you finish your meal, you can just sit there as long as you want because nobody will ever bother you or try to like get you to leave. Yeah, they won't even ask if you want something else. They'll just, until you ask for la cuenta or additional food, like to sit there. Yeah. 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 
So something I personally notice that is not allowed in the U.S. is when uh, people live in the same place that they work. So the restaurant will be downstairs and they will live upstairs or maybe they live towards the back or sometimes they even live towards the front and you have to go through a hallway to get to the room where the restaurant is located. And uh, we even um, tried a Cuban restaurant in which we almost felt like we were sitting in the living room of the home. That was so cool. And there was just like a gate separating us and the couch where the family was sitting and just watching TV or working on the computer. They, they made us, it was, it was a very welcoming environment. Like they made us feel like they had invited us over to dinner and we were their friends and they made conversation with us. Not unwelcome conversation, like nice conversation. Like, I like the places where it's somebody's garage, literally. Yeah. That they turn it to a store or a restaurant or something. Yeah. It's very entrepreneurship. It's very like, okay, What's the job we need? What can we create? What can we do? We've got this space, let's do something with it. So like, in the US, there's so much red tape that you could never possibly start. If you want to share a plate with your child, with a friend, whoever, and you want to just order one meal or one item, they'll give you extra plates if you want to. Whereas in the US, there's all these little like, signs. You have to be under 12 to get this particular meal. You have to be like, they don't really want anything to share. Here it's like whatever. Order the thing, the thing comes with whatever. If you need four plates, we'll give you four plates. The biggest one for me is water. One, they do not give you water. You have to ask for water. If you ask for water, most likely it will not contain any kind of ice unless you request specifically ice. When you do get ice, you will get one single little piece that floats on top and melts within seconds. Right, because you can't just get it from the tap. Right? In the U.S., you want water at a minimum, then you get it from the tap, and it's not a big deal. Here, you have to have kind of plums or something to bring it over, so it's a bigger deal if you're buying water. If you have any questions about any of the things I mentioned, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And don't forget to like and follow if you want to see more of our adventures and all the things we learned along the way. Thanks for joining. Bye!